Hey guys, this is John, Title Tuesday on chess.com, about to get started here any second. 10 rounds of 3 plus 2 blitz, the usual Title Tuesday format. I'm a little bit sick, I'm going to say right away. That is an excuse, but just so you guys know what you're getting into. <laughs> Hello, Belgian novice. Yeah, I've got a cold or something. Almost no, certainly a cold. <laughs> Oop, Hello. gotta mute this. But my throat doesn't hurt too bad. I'm just kind of stuffed up. It was hurting more yesterday, uh, after I streamed yesterday. So had kind of a restless night of sleep. I did get a haircut though today. So you have 48 hours of invincibility when you get a haircut. So I hope that's all right. But yeah, I'll try to I'll try to do my best to to take it easy on my voice today. And play some straightforward chess. How's everyone doing in the chat? Thank you for tuning in. Devil Man says, so scared you weren't doing Title Tuesday. Yeah. I also just got home about 10 minutes ago. I always cut it close, guys, <laughs> with these Title Tuesday streams. All right, so I'm playing the black side of a Slav against Ruvat and M. Ruvat. This is all theory. <clears throat> Let's castle. So I want to stop him from playing e4. He's not ready to do it yet. Uh, I think... I should take his queen here. He's maybe trying to install this knight on a5. That would be my best guess. But by and large, I think this position is completely fine. I actually like the look of this move. Just to oppose his bishop here. Hello, man from Utrecht. He says, here we go. Hey, Segeti, you're not a fan of the closed door? Hello, Chess Bay. Thank you. Okay, knight d5, I think, is is fine here. Uh, knight e5, knight e5 maybe though. Hmm. Let's play this first. Or is he going to come into d6? Is that the plan? Let's do this first. Again, there's that d6 move. Uh, I think this is alright. I'm going to do it. I was just trying to calculate what happens if knight e5. But I don't think it's good for white yet. Plays bishop d6. Yeah, let's just do this. Hey, Christopho and Curbmaster. Ricky on. Hello to everyone who's just joining in here. Knight comes in. I got to take. All right, so now he might succeed in playing e4. It's not the end of the world, though. It's fine. E4, I'll put the knight in on B4. I have some chance to jump to C2 or maybe D3. So knight here, I can play the knight back to E8. Yeah, now I think this is just a, a wise decision. Stop any rook takes A7 in the future. I don't have my coffee today, guys. I already drank it. I've been waking up a little earlier than normal, so I've been drinking my coffee, or trying to drink my coffee exclusively in the morning. I do have some kombucha, though. I got one of these fancy kombucha drinks. Now, do I play knight b4, or do I wait on that? Knight d7. Let's play g6 first. So I'm trying to put all my pawns on light squares because he has a light square bishop. I want to restrict it. Let's go h5. So yeah, I've got a fancy kombucha drink. I feel decent, decent enough. He's stopping me from doing any meaningful pawn breaks at the moment. Let's just go here. I'm thinking about pivoting through e7, bringing the knight back through that square. Or knight d7. But knight d7 he could have taken on d5, and I have some issues with the undefended rook on c7, so I think this is better. Let's do this. Hey, Arthur. Saxy90, hello. Hello, Icelandic Gambit. Okay, so my opponent's doing a good job of keeping the tension, keeping pieces on board. c5, very tempting. 
possibly leads to simplifications. But I think it's a decent move. He offered a draw right there, but I don't want to draw. <laughs> no Swiss Gambit yet until we're forced to. I mean, we've both played a reasonable game so far. I think, in fact, he was slightly better there. Maybe he shouldn't have allowed me to play c5. But he's going to play rook c4 now. Yep. Okay, so if I take... I don't want too many trades. So I think actually b6 makes sense. Let's do that. Now, if he takes on c5, do I take with the pawn or the rook? That's a key question. I think I should take with a rook. Goes back, okay. So let's stop bishop takes a6 in the future. Okay, now I feel like his bishop doesn't have a whole lot to do. So that's nice. I'm definitely going to take with a rook here, I think. <laughs> Leo Sky, thank you for the subscription. Two months. Says, hope you're doing well. Thank you, Leo Sky. I hope you're doing well as well. Okay. Hold the line. Love isn't always on time. I think I'm going to have a slightly better pawn structure now, unless he wants to let me play e4 check. Okay, let's continue as planned. Oh, I maybe should have inserted e4. Maybe should have done that. Still think this is okay, though. Knight d4 coming. Yeah, great Bambi. I just got a haircut. That's right. Right before I came here. <clears throat> hmm. A lot of pawn tension going on in this position. I don't have as much time as him, obviously, but this feels better for me. Don't know if I can win it, but... All right. We'll try. I'm gonna do this. He can play e5 check now is the thing, but... Hmm. I don't know what's happening here. I'm up a pawn, but admittedly his pawn on e5 is strong. I need my knight in a different position. Hmm. Let's maneuver it. I'm going to check. Let's go back. Again, I don't want to draw. I feel like I can make something out of this. Don't see what to do, though. Yeah, don't like what I'm doing here. I'm going to play this next. Provided he takes. Can't take, he loses his bishop. So I had to get my pawn back, but otherwise the position is good. 
to take h5 with check. But this is hard to defend. I've got c4 coming, c3. This is a big threat now. Or it should be. Bring the king in. We're pushing hard here for the victory in the first game, guys. But I think the tide is turning in my favor. Hmm. I'm trying to control d3. I have knight d5 check, importantly. And I can sack my knight for this pawn. I think you missed knight d5. Those backward knight moves, guys. Just pre move that. Now I've got this coming next. Ooh, he gets back in time. Shoot, didn't notice that. Hmm. Again with the draw offer. I'm going to decline it for a second because he blundered that. Wow, and I won on time. That was quite tricky at the end. I actually thought I was just winning, but I missed that after king e4, he can actually play bishop d3. Yeah, I think it is a draw here. This is a tricky move, though, in time pressure. I'm not taking his pawn. I'm not eliminating it yet. I'm just threatening that. I guess he should play bishop a2 check. I was going to play king c5. All right, we start with a win. So, Dart and Dave, thank you for the subscription. DM Captain Obvious, cheered 100 bits. Just coffee check, please confirm you have su sufficient caffeine intake. Sufficient caffeine on hand. Well, so this kombucha, it has caffeine, right? Because kombucha is basically fermented black tea. So it has some caffeine. I don't know if it even lists how much. But yeah, I wish I had my Starbucks on hand. See what other games are still going. <laughs> I know, Chess Bay. I need some probiotics in my body if I'm going to stave off this cold. It is a hipster drink, I know. I'm a bit ashamed. But I got to take what I can get right here. If, I, if I'm going to make it through this two and a half hour title Tuesday... <laughs> the haircut affected your brain. It's quite possible. Okay, so I think black's going to lose here. White is way faster in this position. White has to go eliminate the G pawn or eliminate the H pawn now to get anything going, but it's too slow. So this is going to be decided in white's favor. Let's look at this game. This is a complete draw in a rook end game. And this one. I played against this player before, Matreya. Black is winning. Black even has the correct colored bishop to eventually promote on a1 if the queens get traded. Yeah, queen takes b5. Now white just has stalemate desperation. You know, if that was a light score bishop, white could have played queen c6 there and traded queens. But yeah, correct color bishop for black. I'm going to crack this thing after the next round. John, what were some of your bad childhood chess habits and how did you overcome them? Hmm. I would say one habit I've always had, but more so when I was a kid, was getting up from the board and walking around a lot during a game. So, yeah, I still do that to an extent, but not nearly as much. Just get restless, get up from the board. Uh, time management, certainly. I've always been a time trouble player my whole life. Okay, queen c2 is checkmating in a couple moves. Queen c2, king a1, bishop e5. Black is making this hard on himself. Giving white unnecessary opportunities. John, why are you in the dark? I've got some lights on. I actually have three lights on right around me. But yeah, if I turn on, if I if I open my window, it tends to mess with the lighting in here quite a bit. There's a window right in front of me here. And I try not to open it during streams.
I don't think so, BGH. Although it depends on the chess player. This is this is the last game of the round. Yep. Who do we have in the field, by the way? Let's take a look at some of these players. I was actually wondering, since Magnus had a rest day at the Norway chess tournament, if he was going to be playing this, but I don't think he's in. Ah, Eric is playing. Okay. Uh, Dimitri Andraken is playing. Ferruja. Yeah, a lot of Title Tuesday regulars in here. Parhamov. These Iranian players, man. These young Iranian players. They're so talented. They're already just super strong professionals, basically. Got a Komsky's playing. I had the pleasure of being defeated by him recently. Three hundred and seventy seven players. Oh yeah, good point, Chess Base. So there is a trip to the Isle of Man. This tournament that chess.com sponsors every year. I think the winner of this event, this title Tuesday, wins an all expenses paid trip to that chess.com Isle of Man event, which I think is in September. Hey, Float Akash and Axiom Fox. This game is going forever. Oh, finally Black out the Queen trade. Okay. <laughs> yeah, unnecessary moves. He could have just pushed the A-pawn there. Round two. Here we go. Ten rounds total, guys. Wonderful time. Okay. Thanks, Axiom. I probably played one wonderful time a couple times before. This worked for Wesley So the other day, didn't it? Against Magnus, beating him in an exchange slav. So let's try to replicate that. Bishop b4 is the move here. Can't sleep on that exchange slav. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty boring line that I chose, though. Rook c8 is the move now. Yeah. And now, if he knows this theory, he'll know that knight g4 is the best reply. There's other moves, actually, too, but I think knight g4 is just the most reliable. He does. He knows his theory. Yeah, and after that move, it's just hard for white to prove anything, to be quite honest. All right, I'll take. <laughs> you know my doppelganger, Joseph Whale. And their name is Todd. Let's go here first. He's going to take this back, so I want to be able to, to do something in the case that he plays that. Now, I don't think I should take on a7, actually. I think bad things can happen if you do that, so I'm going to do this. But yeah, again, this line is nothing. I'm not sure why I played it. It's really, really nothing for white. Just opposite color bishops. Not a whole lot going on. Mr. EQ, thank you for the three month subscription. Shout out to you, Mr. EQ. One of my students. Okay, let's play h3 first. I want to kick that bishop. And then we're going to dispute the file. He'll play rook c8. Mm, yeah. Yeah, let's do this. Tim Redman, just subscribe. Thank you, Tim. Hmm. 
<laughs> so I'm thinking about bishop d6 in this position. But actually that loses a piece. I should not play that. I could trade, he takes with the queen and he has the file temporarily. Guess I'm a little bit worse here somehow. Yeah, little bit worse. I'm still gonna take though, I think I have to take. And now maybe this move. There's queen c3 at issue there. Hmm. I'm going to go here. He has the file. It shouldn't be much, but... <laughs> the fact that I'm worse in an exchange slav with white is disturbing after this many moves. There he is, a5. All right, so I'm gonna play it though. Queen c5, if he, if he plays a5. Queen c5, queen d7, queen a3 probably. Wonderful time will try to squeeze you for sure. So let's try to play good defense here. Hide the king. I'll try to counterattack his rook. I move my king so my rook can swing over at some point. So let's do that. Now he's going to try to attack my pawns. Okay, we'll go here. It's a little annoying for him because this rook is kind of weak. Case in point, trying to attack this rook. Complicated. Can maybe take on c5 with the pawn and try for an attack eventually. I'm going to keep harassing that rook. I think playing for a win is a little dangerous for me because he's on f2 and my bishop is hanging. So I don't know about that. He's going to play for the win. Okay, interesting. All right. <clears throat> 
Let's take this guy. And now I just want to safeguard my king. I'm not worried so much about the center pawns. Okay, check. I think I'm going to get him here. He pushed a little hard. Oh, maybe I pushed too hard. Man. <laughs> I pushed too hard. Oh, no. Yeah, that's losing. How did that happen? So he's really escaping to h5 here, and I can't take on e6. Hmm. Wow. I think I'm just busted after this. I can't play g4 check. His king is just safe there. Ooh. That was somewhat unlucky. Yeah. I'm lost after I take on e6. I have to play queen g3 here. Yeah. Still looks bad for him, but actually, maybe not. He has an attack on g2. Wow. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, you could say there's no luck in chess, but... <laughs> that, that was not supposed to happen. And I think he would agree. <laughs> It was a gutsy decision. I mean, we're both playing to win, so he he decided to take on c5 and let me take his rook because he was he was just betting that this threat would be too much for me to handle with my queen all the way over here, which is understandable. But I think this should be close to winning for White. He kind of tried to throw his kingside pawns at me like he did, and I especially felt like when I played rook c1 that it was over. But queen f2. I can check on different squares here. I can check instead of playing rook c7, I can play queen d7. But this is just the move you're going to play in time pressure. Yeah, and now I got to play queen g3. Kind of unbelievable. Okay. That's how the cookie, cookie crumbles, guys. <laughs> Let's take a look at a GM versus GM matchup. This position, it's better for white. White can take on F5 here. Black has a few coordination issues. I think white could have played rook takes H4 there. Rook takes A6, rook H6 check with the skewer. Don't go here. Rook e3 would be mate. Yep, I did win the first. What other streamers are in the mix today? We saw Eric was playing. So he's in the mix. I think Andre Ostrovsky is a streamer. Ah, Andrew is playing. I saw him somewhere. Penguin GM1. My buddy Keaton is playing. Shout out to Keaton. He's on two out of two. John Ludwig Hammer. Stack tournament, guys. Oh, and now we have the famous endgame. Rook and Bishop versus Rook. This is a theoretical draw. It's happened many times in Title Tuesday. However, you have to know what you're doing if you're the defensive side. And the side with the bishop can push for a long time. Yeah, I'm at 50% fire hunt. Oh, I didn't know that rank wise. Yeah, Keaton, he coaches a lot of chess. He's a cool dude. Andraken lost to Hansen, really? Okay, Eric. Eric has come to play. 
I'm going to try to stream tomorrow, by the way, the Royal Kings Blitz Arena. If I'm able, if I'm not still sick. I mean, if I'm in this com condition, I think I can do it, no problem. But if I don't get worse, let's say. I predict Black will save the draw here. I don't think Demchenko is going to beat Gawain Jones in this. But yes, as Icelandic Gambit just said, it is easy to screw this up, definitely. One of the main defensive formations is to have your rook behind the bishop. So this situation for black is a good one. I think king here actually is a good move, even though it's to the back rank. Then you can break with your king in whichever direction that is opposite the way white goes. So like now he should play here, king f8. He doesn't want to end up in an opposition situation where he might get checkmated. Yep. It's just not much for white to do. If white makes a waiting move on this on this rank, then black will play rookie two and also just wait. Okay, black's pretty low on time though. Got to move. All right, he's escaping again, trying to keep a file in between the kings. As soon as white breaks one way. Yeah, good point, Maiden47. I was just reviewing this in 100 end, game, 100 end games, you must know. I was looking at this exact end game. There's a bunch of, bunch of variations in that book about rook and bishop versus rook. Oh, you were lying about Andraken losing to Eric? <laughs> This is the strongest position white has achieved so far. Now white is threatening rook c8, but it's still not enough. Any other games left? Just one other one. What do I think about Jeremy Silman's book? Which one? I think his books are decent in general. I think they're a little overrated, to be honest, but they're not bad. How to Reassess Your Chess is probably his most famous one. Uh, I think his Complete Endgame course is probably his best book. How to Reassess Your Chess is a bit abstract at points, I think, and not, not so applicable to most lower-rated players uh, at times. And this is another defensive formation. So Gawain is keeping, now he'll play the rook back to g3. If ever there's a check, he can play king h4. Looks like black is being pushed to the brink, but it's all right. Okay. Time to crack open the kombucha. Playing the angry Serb. I get another white. All right. All right, probiotics. Do your thing. Healthy gut bacteria. I should have worn my hipster beanie today. What do you guys think? This is a Tarash defense. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, I'll play a positional line. Ooh, he's gonna play something aggressive. You know, this line is interesting. I have a friend, international master Dimitri Schneider who I lived with when I was living in New York City back in 2011, 2012. And he swore by this line for black. He was obsessed with it. He always played it. It's interesting. It's an interesting pawn sack. Black is trying to play in the center. Often they throw their G pawn at you too later. He might even do it right now. But ultimately, I think it should be unsound. But for a blitz game, I think this is, in fact, a pretty decent weapon. There's a couple decent weapons in the Tarash, actually. It's an underrated opening. I don't play it myself for black, but I've thought about it. D3. Mm -hmm. I feel like I should play E3 against that, even though I don't like that pawn surviving. Also, what about just A3 here? Or even B5? A3 
A3 might be decent. Yeah, actually, let's do A3. I'm going to let him take on E2. I want to avoid playing E3 if I can. But I need to stabilize my queen side. It's too weak otherwise. He was starting to take and then take D2 and then take B4 eventually. So I need to stabilize this chain. All right, so now I'm thinking about just taking this pawn. With this rook lined up, I need to do something about that now. So he's going to take with the queen and then hit a3, I think he's saying. Bishop e3 might not be bad here. Bishop b3 looks decent. I'm going to play that. Again, I think if I push e3, that just gives black what he wants. The strong pawn. Divide the position in half. Kind of cuts off my coordination between king side and queen side. So now I've got two pieces attacking d3. I've got pawn and queen. I think my right mouse click is not working reliably anymore. It's only working about one out of every four clicks. <laughs> so if I can't cancel a pre-move, you guys know why. I, I just need a new mouse. <laughs> I know you guys have been telling me for, for weeks now to get a new mouse, and it might be time. He's going into the tank here. He's thinking a lot. Okay, if he doesn't manage to hurt me in the center, I'm happy here. Because it just looks like a straight extra pawn. Knight g5. Huh. So he wants at my bishop, I guess. Okay. Play this one. He's starting bishop d3. He's going to play queen e7 now. And I think I'm just going to take and play rook e1. Looks most prudent. Uh, does he have some bishop c2 stuff at the end? That's annoying. It's a bit annoying. Okay, I don't have all day here. Let's do this. A lot of bit action going on. Belgian novice, Eschner, Mr. EQ, 500 bits each. Support for the new mouse, buy a new mouse, mouse fund. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, now I have no excuses. I got to hop on Amazon after this. Ah, that move, yes. Can take this way though. And now here. Must play faster. 47 seconds. I've maintained this extra pawn though. He's gonna have to move his queen and then I'm gonna take g5. Chessy bus, 250 bits. House fund. Did you mean house or mouse? If you want to buy me a new house, uh, I probably wouldn't protest. Although I do like my house. <laughs> Thanks, Chessy Bus. Uh, all right, so he's trying to resist with the bishop pair here. I just want to trade some stuff. What else is new? Take. Hmm. Take again. Time to put these guys in motion. This should be good. Knight c4, rookie one. 
awkward for him. B6, I have C6. At C4, I also might want to play King G2 first and just safeguard that knight. Uh, probably rookie one is safer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's establish that pawn, especially with time pressure looming. Could have kept the tension as well. Okay. Okay, not a whole lot of time for either of us. If he takes here, I take here. I'm, I just want my C pawn. I don't actually really care about the A pawn. I want my C pawn to survive, though. Rook there. Okay, he's hitting my rook. Let's take this. I think I have this move. Can you take here? I have queen here. This feels like it's winning. This queen is hit and there's also rookie eight, big threat. I think it's too much. All right, we take that one, guys. We take it against the angry Serb. Yeah, so dual threats at the end of this and rookie eight that back ranker. So I benefited from the fact that he hadn't moved any of these pawns, even though he did manage to win the A and the B pawn. Uh, we have a bit train going. <laughs> also, Henrik Karlstrom, 100 bits. He says, spouse fund, spouse fund. <laughs> you guys are helping me move up in the world. Mouse fund, house fund, spouse fund. What's next? No, but seriously, thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Uh, let's get a game going here. See who is in the mix. I'd like to get Eric's game up if possible. Eric's always capable of finishing near the top of these title Tuesdays. I don't see him, though. We'll just look at a GM GM game. The Blouse Fund, yeah. The Delousing Fund. Eric lost. That's too bad. Uh, Chess Bay, 241 bits. Starbucks fund. Yep. $2.41. The price of a small iced Americano. Uh, or sorry, a tall, because we're talking about Starbucks. DM Captain Obvious, 100 bits. Vacation to Laos, <laughs> Vacation to Laos fund. <laughs> but yeah, seriously, if anyone has any good mouse recommendations, and also a mouse pad too. Uh, this is going to go on YouTube after I play this tournament, so feel free to leave me some recommendations. I've looked into them in the past, and I know there's a ton of ones that would probably work, but just some direction would be great. I know there's a lot of gamers out there, you guys. No Name Neighbor. Cheered 100 bits. Seems good. Thanks, No Name Neighbor. I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick, guys. So we're three rounds in. Lots more chess to be played. Be right back.
Okay. I didn't miss anything. This is good. How many more games do we have going? Two games. Let's watch this one. Another theoretical endgame. King and Queen versus King and Rook. Theoretical win for the King and the Queen. But again, a little bit tricky. I had this one time against Grandmaster Alex Trapunsky when I was in high school. You guys maybe 15 or 16 years old. And I didn't win it with the Queen. I was disappointed. Now, this is a bad sign. When the king and the rook get split up like that, it's usually just a matter of time, especially in the human versus human game, until the queen forks the king and the rook. Although, admittedly, white's king was in the center. More so when that happens, it's usually the king is on the side of the board. Uh, when computers defend this endgame, that's what they do. They tend to disconnect the king and the rook because they can calculate all the lines and they know that the rook is safe. But humans, it's, it's really hard to make that leap. Gbeth says, "I see you have played the classical Sicilian. Did you find it easy, or uh, did you find it easy to learn, or too many forced slash tactical lines?" I'm thinking of taking it up. I actually thought it was pretty easy to learn. Yeah, I think as far as Sicilians go, compared to the Knight or for Dragon, there's a lot less sharp lines that you have to know. Some of the Richter Rouser lines are pretty sharp, but yeah, I don't think it's if you have some Sicilian experience, you can play the classical Sicilian. And even if you don't, it's one of the more, uh, you know, anything, anything in chess with the word classical in it, in the name of the opening, is a pretty good line to study. So that's a fundamental Sicilian right there. Okay, and here again, white is probably going to have to disconnect the king and the rook soon. Or at least black is making progress towards that goal. King here, king here. There's a famous situation in this endgame where you have to triangulate, if you're the side with the queen, to put the opponent in Tsukswang. Okay, now this is where we're going to get these zigzag checks. Uh, I would have checked here if I were black. That was a mistake. Black should have checked on C2. But black is still making progress. Yeah, king C6 now. Now that rook, again, is going to have to go far away. And black should be able to win with some zigzag checks here to eventually fork. Needs to like get the queen to C2 with the same configuration. But he's not figuring out how to do it. Floyd Akash gifted a subscription to Heiserjack. Thanks, Floyd Akash. Welcome aboard, Heiserjack. Yeah, Black is botching this a bit. I mean, it's understandable. I, I'm sure I would be nervous here too. But this shouldn't happen. Now he's got to start this over again. Let white escape. He's going to have to try to corner him down here. And they're probably bumping up against the 50 move rule soon. Mm, what was the last capture? It's always hard to scroll back and see. It'd be kind of a cool feature if the site actually told you how many moves until the 50 move rule. I don't think any site does that. I mean, in a competition, it wouldn't be a thing. Unless you were to ask the arbiter or something, but it'd be kind of interesting just to have a little ticker on the side of the board that said how many moves. Yeah, okay, so again, Black has the correct position here, but he's got to figure out how to fork these guys. Check. And now, yeah, he's going to check here. Oh. <laughs> I think white's going to escape with a draw here, unless black does something real quick. King a3. There you go. Draw, 50 move roll. So even GMs have a hard time winning that. Sometimes they can't. Yeah. It's a good endgame to study, though. All right, playing Grandmaster Archer Chicks. Some people are saying he missed Queen E5. Yeah, he missed several wins there. Okay, you guys, you know what time it is. This is the fourth round. I got to make a move in this tournament. This is the time to do it. 
Got my kombucha on hand. Grandmaster Archer Chicks, he's getting the Scandi, the Scandi treatment. The third degree in the Scandi. Played this position against Andras in our dual commentaries. Uh, Bishop f4, interesting. Yeah, that is a move. So if takes, there's knight b5, and there's some, some sharp stuff there that I wouldn't recommend going into as black. So how I have to remember, is it bishop b4 or is it knight d5? It's one of the two. I'm going to play bishop b4. So threatening this, and after queen takes, this. He knew about bishop f4, that's kind of an emerging move. I want to say I had this position against Andras. Take? I think I did. I think I did have this position against him. He also wasted a move playing bishop g5. And now if queen takes, there's knight e4. And I think that should work out pretty well for black. He'll take on d8, I take on c3. Get a trade here. It's bishop versus knight, but white's queenside structure is a little fractured. So, no longer a pair of bishops to worry about. A4. Hmm. I feel like this pawn could be a weakness later. Let's do this. So I might play my knight here at some stage. Maybe make him put his rooks like he's doing now. He wouldn't want to take here. That would be the Fisher mistake because of g6. But I'm going to do this anyways. Mainly to stop bishop f5 if I play e5. I like this position. This is a nice setup for me, I think. Yeah, let's do this now. Because I think these queenside weaknesses are already going to come to tell here. It's not a slam dunk yet, though, by any means. Let's play f5, gain some space. Rook b1, rook b8. No problem. The position's relatively close, so that's why I believe in the knight and my more compact position. Yeah, Fisher Spassky. Fisher dared Spassky to take the pawn on h2. Or, sorry. Spassky dared, dared Fisher to do it, and Fisher did. And he could have later drawn the endgame, but he messed up and lost. So that's what that bishop takes h2 or bishop takes h7 uh, acceptance of the pawn, but having your bishop trap that motif. It's known for that game. g4. Interesting move. Hmm. Let's take. And next I'm going to take here. Try to attack these weaknesses. These sort of ideas. So promising position here, I think, still. Hmm. I'm going to go for a check. If he goes king d3, I have check here.
not sure about this move. It takes another pawn off a of light square, but I'm trying to free up my rook to do something. And if ever c4 is played, it might be nice to go here, is my thinking. So. Hmm. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I think I messed this up a little bit. I think I definitely did. It's not terrible, but it's not what I wanted either. That I don't understand though. Is he gonna take? Okay, so he's saying he has rook check. I see. All right, I think I gotta do this then. Now he has this move if he wants. Well, then I could just sidestep. I can play king a7. Hmm. Tough to say, I do have a knight. A knight in time pressure is valuable. It's very useful. You can take it, but then this pawn is weak, so I'm really hoping to win this pawn soon. I might need a temporizing move first, though, like rook here or something. He doesn't know what to do. Just check his intentions here. Probably doesn't want to draw, so he's gonna, he's gonna try for something. That is awfully greedy though, what he just did there. Oh, oh man. Did not realize that would happen though. Oh, I just blew it. I blew it big time. Bishop back to e2. Yikes. Yeah, that's over. Hmm. So again, I get blindsided by a tactic. Let me see that. Rook c7. Hmm. That's a tricky move. I think I have to play b5 first. Yeah. I could maybe take here. I just kind of dismissed it because it opened up, opens up the bishop, but... Something like this. I thought this move was keeping everything defended, but yeah. He takes with the bishop and just wins everything. If here, take. That's just a straight piece. End of the game. And if I take here, he takes with check is the big problem. And then wins the rook. Hmm. Yep. And maybe the best move of all, just b5 right away. Yeah, I think that's the way to do it. b5, let's say he takes here. Trade, maybe take. Uh, probably take with rook. And if he does this, this pawn's going to be pretty fast. Somehow feels like it should be a draw, this rook end game. All rook end games are draws. <laughs> but all right, I had a good position there. Just blew it. Didn't play so well in the time scramble. But already here, I felt like I was letting some of the advantage slip. He figured out a good way to open the position. Uh, Tom Walker, cheered one bit. Thank you, Tom. Uh, three days shipping subscribed. Three days shipping.
So I'm two and two so far. Let's see who we're gonna check out here. Mm. Let's watch this guy, Shugirov. <laughs> Hashtag never Scandy. Wasn't the Scandy's fault though. Can't blame it on the Scandy. Mm, I think that's an exaggeration, Dillion. It's not like I never have tactics in my games. So that's kind of ridiculous. I don't have a super tactical style, but I do fine on tactics. These these were some unusual tactics. I mean, the first game wasn't even really a tactic. It was just, I don't know. Honestly, I felt like he got lucky that first game to have that resource. The position normally would just be busted there. But I did miss that G2 was indefensible after I gave that queen takes E6 check. It's just, I'm not going to blame myself too much for that one. But yeah, this last one, I should have seen this whole bishop back to e2 thing after rook c7. Well, you can't compare me to Simon as far as how many tactics are going to be possible in our games. Simon plays overtly for tactics and complications every time. He's way on the extreme end when it comes to that. What would I say my biggest weakness is? I mean, I would say calculation is definitely something I have to work on. Uh, but I think openings as well. My opening repertoire is not what I would like it to be. <clears throat> so we're almost halfway through this thing. Round five coming up after this. This game is a draw. And how about this game? Another Rook and Bishop versus Rook. Okay. So let's see how Black defends this one. Ooh. Ooh, Black knows one of the... Again, you're seeing another defensive technique. If White had taken that Rook right there, Bishop takes e7, that would be stalemate. That's the last ditch defensive effort. Otherwise, Black would be losing. But kudos to Black for knowing that. This is uncomfortable, though. Rook here having to guard rook d8. So now white is going to try to reposition himself. Rook check, probably. Tom Walker, thanks for the two bits. Yeah, try the Scandi. I won't hesitate to use it again. Thanks, Tom. 200 bits. Yep, see you, Tom. See you later. Great Bambi asks, I enjoy playing positional games, but I find myself getting to a point where I don't know how to convert slight positional advantages without overextending myself. Any suggestions on practicing? Probably, and I assume by your question, you're probably a decent player. It'd be good to look at games from... Very good positional strategic players, such as Karpov, for instance. Playing through their games and seeing how they uh, convert these positions, that could be of some help to you. Because, yeah, there is often a point where you need to find a concrete way to just win the position. And I think we could all work on that. Winning a one game. You know you're better strategically, and how do you close it out? So that's where I draw a lot of inspiration and instruction from the games of top level players especially like with Karpov there's a two part book series by Quality Chess Karpov's Strategic Wins that I think is pretty good any opinions on Josh Waitskin's chess work I really like his book for beginners that was one of my favorite books growing up I think it's called Josh Waitskin Attacking Chess or something like that I thought that was a, a very good one Gives a lot of examples from his, his games in New York as an up-and-coming young player. Shows a lot of 
standard tactical themes in an entertaining way. All right, so this game was a draw. Black succeeded in defending. And I'm playing Marakra, Marakaras, 06. If e4, do we go Scandi again? Okay. We're not going to get the chance. I'm just going to stick with d4, d5. Uh, I don't know, Skins. I, I'm not sure. I still haven't decided about that. I'm definitely going to keep some of my Twitch and YouTube content separate. But I, I might still upload those. I haven't decided. So Queen B3 is usually played here. Now if he does that, can I play Bishop D6? Bishop D6 is often a move you can try. I'm just trying to remember if I can play it in this exact position. I think I can. And I think I will. I saw this played by Grandmaster Johnny Hector. The Swedish Grandmaster. It's a pawn sack. Uh, and White didn't even take me up on it. That's a shame. <laughs> now I'll just defend the pawn. But yeah, if White plays Queen takes B7, some interesting stuff happens. Bishop takes F4, Queen takes C6, King F8. Black has very good compensation. Uh, Steli, D4, Knight F6. I used to play that a little bit. I used to play the Banco Gambit for Black. But not so much recently. Pretty much stopped playing the Benko about 10 years ago. I lost faith in it. Mm, all right, let's play a6. Pretty standard position for this line. Not a whole lot going on. Let's keep the queens on the board, keep more tension. Stop the presses. I avoided a queen trade. <laughs> okay, so is he trying to go into b3 and then to c5 with his knight? Maybe. Thinking about knight e4, I'm thinking about just rook fc8. Let's play rook fc8. Stay flexible. I think he's going to try to put a knight here and then in here. But I want to wait for him to do that so I can put my knight here or here. One of the two. Maybe just d7. e4 also tempting, but that blocks my bishop if I put it there. Okay, let's take... Okay, now I'm going to offer a queen trade. And maybe reposition this knight. Possibly this. I don't know, I think the queen side structure is roughly equal. He, he never wants to play b4 because it weakens c3 too much. b7 is kind of a weakness, but really the only way he can attack it is to do what he's trying to do here. But he can't, he can't get another attacker there. I think f6 is fine. Uh, could reposition the knight, like I've been saying. Let's play f6. Let's start trying to activate my majority eventually. Keep his knight out of e5. Okay. Just bring this up. Is he bringing this knight around? I think he probably is. Okay, now... Do I want to play b5? That weakens a6 a lot. 
So maybe I shouldn't do that. Or B6. B6 might be the better move order. I think B6 is what I should do here. I'm going to do that. And my thinking is, even though after takes I have a very weak A pawn, he has a weak B pawn that he can't easily defend. So it might end up being a, just a wash, just a trade for those two. Yeah, I think B6 is better than B5, because on B5, he could have just jumped his knight in right away. This way, though, I'm denying him that square, so... Can take with the bishop here. All right, he's going to come in immediately. So let's take. Probably take here with the bishop. Let's go e5. That was a good trade. I like that clarification of the queen side structure for me. Position's still probably about equal. Admittedly, this knight is strong, but. I'll have counterplay against d4. I think it's balanced. Time will be a big factor now. Mm hmm. Let's take. I'm trying to set up knight takes d4 when he still has this back rank weakness. Maybe knight b4, but this is the main idea. So he goes back, okay. <clears throat> My rook's under attack. I should take this. Well, he's got to be a little careful. Again, knight b4 is in the air. He maybe should take with the bishop, but then I can take d4. d4 is ripe for the plucking. Yeah, he's got problems here. Now he needs some sort of lift move. Yep, so he plays it. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do this. I want to reposition this guy. I want to go after this eventually. Very little time for him. Now let's bring this in. Okay. Offer a trade. Mm. I don't know. Let me go here. Trying to maneuver somewhere like this. That is actually a pretty big threat now. So now if he comes in, I have a rook to the back rank. Like this. And he has one check, but then I think he loses. This is dropping. Trying for that. Knight g3, king h2, rook h1, mate. Okay, I'm happy with that game. That was a nice strategic game with a couple tactics at the end, such as letting him double on the back rank, but getting in this and, and winning his bishop despite him taking that. So, yeah. This was a little tricky, though, after, rook, after he played f3, I'd say, because I need to attack this and this. I'd love to get my knight here. E3 is the ideal square for it. So I was trying to make way, and I could have played knight c2 immediately here. I don't know why I didn't, actually. I think it just didn't occur to me. King g6 might be a little weak. I, I played that as prophylaxis just in anticipation of a rook a7 move, but yeah. I'm looking at it again. I think just this immediately is better. 
and it's hard for him to stop this. He can't play rook a3, he can't play rook a1, my knight covers those squares. He could check and see where my king goes, and if king g6 then play rook e7, but that's hard to find in a bullet game, or in a blitz game, rather. Bullet time scramble. Okay, who do we got here? Just taking a peek at the standings. So three players on five out of five. They've already finished their games this round. Whole host of players on four and a half. You know, this title Tuesday, the, these events are just ridiculously tough. I mean, if I were to ever come top three in a title Tuesday with this sort of field, that would be probably the highlight of my chess career <laughs> up till now in terms of difficulty. So let's get a game up. Let's watch these two players. Over. Mm, let's watch our buddy Keaton. Keaton has a theoretical endgame. He has the king and the rook against the king and the knight, and he's trying to... Oh, no, sorry. He has the king and the knight, and it was just a, a draw. Okay, so Keaton saves a half point there. Eric is always done by the time that my game finishes. What's going on here? This is interesting. Wow, that is a bad bishop. That is a very bad bishop. It is blockading the B-pawn, but that's the only positive thing you can say about that piece. White is pushing for a win here, despite being down a piece for just two pawns. Dominating setup, though, for white. This is the threat, and that bishop is toast. Okay, so he's going to try to play, but still, that's winning. Rook here. Okay, F6 first, I guess. I think I would have played rook here first. That seemed better. And then bishop c8, b7. Now with the bishop back on c8. Oh, black is almost in Zugzwang. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe white had it all figured out. Look at that. There's hardly any moves for black. The king cannot legally move anywhere. The rook, yeah, all its squares it can go to are, are covered. The only move is bishop here. And then I think white was going to do this, and this, and wins. Take, trade off the rooks, go after the pawns, GG. That's a cool endgame. I like that. Uh, who else? Yeah, right, Steli? That was beautiful. I agree. I maybe should have gone back and looked at that game closer because I wonder if White planned that or if it just that setup happened to occur. White lost a piece or sacrificed it and just stumbled into that. Given that there was a protected pass pawn that deep on b6, I'm guessing that White sacked on b7 at some point. There was a black pawn there. Maybe White had a knight and sacked for it to try to break through. I am drinking kombucha. I'm drinking green jasmine kombucha. Oh, that reminds me. Let's do a little giveaway. You guys ready for this? Little giveaway. We're halfway through the tournament. So I can award some memberships from chess.com each month. So I'll, I'll give away a one-month diamond membership to whoever can guess what U.S. state, what U.S. state this kombucha was produced in. So think of all the hipster states you know. First person to say it in the chat. You get that one month diamond membership. You'll have to whisper me afterwards, but let's see what you guys come up with. It's not a city, it's a state. Ooh, someone got it. Someone got it. Hold up, let me go back and make sure. Okay. Congratulations, I have a problem. XD, it is Washington State. Yes, Washington State. This was produced in Bellingham, Washington. Yeah, very good guess. Some other good guesses in there, too. <laughs> so I have a problem if you whisper me on Twitch or just get in contact with me. You can send me a tweet if you have Twitter. I'll set you up with that one-month diamond. Snap Bean, you got it as well, but that was the, the first Washington answer that I saw in the chat. If someone else said it, no, I think he was the first one. 
Okay, Dormon 7 is the next opponent. Let's play this again. I have to play it better this time, though. No opposite color bishop position where I'm just slightly worse with white after 15 moves. Whoa, e5. I forgot that e5 is a move here. I honestly did. All right, I'll take. That's why I start with knight f3, John. <laughs> you rule out e5. Okay, this line is playable for both sides. And you go knight f3 after this, I believe. Let's see where the queen goes. Queen d5. Hmm. Uh, I don't remember how to play this position because I'm not supposed to get into this position via my repertoire. Okay, let's just guard b4. b4 is kind of weak, so... Problem here is it's hard to develop the light score bishop. I think white pretty much has to go for e4 or e3. a5. Hmm. Alright, let's do this. a5 seems a little weakening to me. I wasn't so much thinking about playing b4. Maybe b4 would be a move, but I don't think there's a, a good reason to play a5. Hello to Doramon, by the way. I feel like I played this player maybe in a viewer tournament at some point. This player might watch the stream. Yeah, Chessy Bus. I'm three out of five. That's correct. Hmm. Let's go here in preparation for this. He's trying to make it so that if there was a trade, he'd be hitting my bishop on e3, and I didn't want that. Structure is almost symmetric, though, is, is one issue here. It's hard to make something of this position. Yeah, I'm just going to complete my development. He'll probably play bishop e7, we'll both castle. Rook d1, queen b3, something like that. Rook c8. Looking for discoveries. Okay. I say bring it. Because I have queen a4 check if he does a discovery, is my thinking. So if knight d4, queen a4 check. If bishop d7, I can play queen takes d4, so... I just don't see a truly dangerous discovery for him. Maybe I can use this window of time to do something. Probably not, though. It's probably going to be too tough anyways. Okay, but let's still attack his queen with tempo. I think he'll play here. Maybe I can get that knight into f5 eventually. Queen b3... Yeah, let's say I trade and play rook d2. I think that's a sliver of an edge for me. This coming. That's really not much, but... In a position like this, there's no pawn tension. You gotta work with your pieces and try to get good outposts. Try to make something happen. Even if it's a slight thing like getting the bishop pair, which it might be here. Mm, he's getting a little low on time, too, so it's not going to be easy for him. Okay, I can trade and play bishop b6. Let's do that. Hmm. Do I play bishop b6 immediately or trade first? I think trading first is better. I'm going to play like that. 
play rook d5 probably. But then I have knight d4. Knight d4 is nice. These pieces look uh, kind of wrong-footed here. This is attacked. Bishop f3 is on its way. Let's keep up the heat here. Come on, probiotics. Let's do this. My performance enhancing kombucha. He's got this square he can work with. I can't take on a5 because my knight is hanging at the end. I can win a pawn here, right? That's probably the best move. I'm going to do that. Yeah, thought about playing rook c1 first, but I think this is even better. Just keep up the pressure. Oh, is he thinking about knight d5? He might be thinking about that. But then I guess I just take here. Yeah. He'll take with his knight, I bet. And that's an extra pawn. Let's see if I can convert. Oh, you just resign. Okay, that's definitely premature. You got to make your opponent prove that. But hey, thanks for the game, Dorman. I don't know if he just was disgusted by his play or he respected me so much. But yeah, that was clearly premature. <laughs> I don't know. It probably is winning for white. It's, it's a healthy pawn. It's a protected past eight pawn. C6 is weak. But there's a lot of steps I'm going to have to take to, to properly convert this. And, you know, I was going to be under a minute soon too, so... Surprising decision. All right. Again, I'd like to see a fellow streamer, one of their games, but there's actually not too many of these streamers in. Uh, here's Hammer's game. Let's look at Hammer. Hammer's playing the guy that I lost to in the Scandi. So naturally, I'm rooting for Hammer, but he's in big trouble here because F3 is a threat in this. And he has no time. F3 check. Ooh. Or just win the bishop. Okay, that works too. There are a lot of wins there. I'm 2461 feet A, as Chessy Bus just said, yes. I think my peak was high 2470s. Where's Eric's game, guys? Who is he playing? Oh, here he is. Okay, Eric... Has a rook and knight against a queen, playing an IM. And he has an extra pawn, so it's material parity. Um, I like Eric's position because he can stick this rook on e6, and then his, his setup is completely stable. The rook is defending this, and then he'll start maneuvering his knight. He'll start trying to bring his knight to f5. It'll be tough to win. This will be a tough position to actually win, but it's highly likely that white will make a mistake somewhere because black... Eric can play this with almost no risk, so long as he keeps his rook here. And white can't say the same. I mean, against a knight, you can never relax. There's always forks. How do I sound, by the way, guys? Not, not so much my mic quality, but do I sound stuffed up? Because I feel like I am not resonating the way I usually do, but it's not too bad. I've just been mauling these cough drops. Okay, that's good to hear. I think this game will be a draw now. After Eric has played d4. Actually, I don't really like d4 for him. But maybe he'll prove me wrong. I think he's trying to get his rook behind. Whoa, 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 whoa. Couldn't White have just taken here? What was wrong with queen takes d3? I don't understand what's happening here. Okay, now he can check and win this pawn. Oh, Eric is blowing this big time. Yeah, yeah. Playing d4 was risky. He destroyed his whole setup after that. Okay, he still has something of a, of a fortress here. He can put his knight on c6. But he went from being up 
a pawn to now being down a pawn. Maybe still having a fortress, but not easy anymore. White's going to push. White's going to go f4, introduce f5 at some stage. Then again, Eric has a knight. When you have a knight, you always have a chance. Why the lighting change? Well, I actually got this light. You guys can probably barely see it. It's just like this overhead light that sits right above my monitor. Because the lighting in this room is just really bad. That's the Cliff Notes version. So I'm just playing around with new lighting setups. We'll see how this turns out. So there comes f5. I think Eric has to take it. I don't think you want to play. Ooh, he plays knight check. Interesting. Interest. Interessant. Knight d3. Probably king f3. King g3. Ooh. Now, if Eric takes, there's queen d8, unfortunately. This is a tricky endgame. But again, it looks bad. It looks bad for Eric. This guy's connection is bad, though. Member offline. Ooh, I think Eric's going to get away with one here. He's got to come back. Oh, I think he lost on time. <laughs> Very deserved victory, Eric. That's the way you do it. Representing for us streamers. Have your opponent disconnect. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Eric is not pleased with himself. I think that should have been a draw, though. Yeah, he just pushed too hard. Eric did. He, he, again, put the pawn on d4, I think. Maybe that's the only way to try to play for a win. Probably it is, but I think he was regretting that pretty soon. So Eric and I have the same amount of points. There's two players on six out of six. Uh, let's look at the counts game. Christian Carrilla. He just won. Carrilla's a really good endgame player. So his opponent just threw in the towel there. Indeed, it looks like it's going to get to a Lucina position. This should be sufficient for White to win. Mm, and we have a queen endgame. That was just drawn. All right. This, this tournament is moving along at a pretty decent clip. So round six coming up. Or no, sorry. Is this round seven? Yeah, round seven. Ooh, I'm playing one of these Iranian titans. One of these young Iranian players who are just ridiculously good. I played this guy in the... Um, he always plays these flank setups too. I played this guy in the tournament yesterday. The Royal Kings... Bullet Arena. He's going to try to give me the Georg Meyer treatment. Well, I got to play for you guys the clip from Georg Meyer's stream yesterday. It's so funny. I'll play it for you guys at the end of this tournament, or if I get a break. Basically, Georg Meyer just savaged me on, on his stream. Hmm. That early of a knight h4. Interesting. Hmm. Alright, let's just castle. He's going to put that knight in on f5. At some stage, so. I'm going to do this. I'm kind of a fan of playing b5 as soon as possible in these positions. Let's do this. Knight a5. Okay. Let's guard him. Ah, uh, yeah. Chessy bus just put the clip up. Myra was lagging really bad during that stream, but it's not so much about what's, what's happening on the board, it's about what he said. <laughs> a 
coincidentally, this looks a lot like a game I had against Meyer the other day. All right, I think I'm holding my own here. I think this is fine. I can maybe play f6 and bishop back to f7 at some stage. Let's get this over, just a little more protection. I'm going to leave the bishop here, though, for now, because it's nice to control d1. f3. Hmm. Seems awfully sophisticated. I don't know about that move. Do this. Hmm. So I can play knight into c3, but I think it's actually better to keep this back. c2 is weak. Maybe I can play bishop c5 later if I want. I'm going to do that. i got to play a little faster. He's definitely beating me on the clock right now. <laughs> King Shorsi. I completely agree. All right. Let's do this. This knight should be out of play. It really should. Oh, he has knight b7, though. Hmm, that's too bad. All right, I got to sack this pawn, I guess. This b pawn. Has to be done. Okay, that was a blunder. I blundered right at the moment that someone said Meyer sounds like a super villain. Those things had to be connected. <laughs> Alright, I gotta get rid of this knight. He's probably gonna maneuver it to d5, but I need to get a square for me. I need a square for my own. Let's go here. I'm just worried about these knights. Ugh, now a6 is attacked. If this guy could stop moving so fast, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> uh, man. Knight c4. All right. Bombs away. It's probably jumping in here soon. But I feel like I almost had to play that move. I need some sort of counterplay. Any counterplay. Leaving a6 flapping in the wind. Oh, this is just awful, actually. Yeah, there's actually not a whole lot to do here. Okay, I'll play this. Gotta make a move. Threaten e4 or something. These are coming. Uh, all right, take. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I'm just going to try something. Just trying. He can take with the A pawn. He can... Take with the rook. Any move wins. 
Had to do something there, though. Let's hope he blunders this. Hmm. All right. Time to resign. Good game, Mr. Parhamov. I think it started falling apart when I played B4. B4 was not a good move because he just lost a pawn. B4 takes. I missed here that F queen takes, holding this pawn. I have D6 covered, so I don't have to worry about knight D6, but he has this move. And then he pivots this knight around. Yeah, and then it was all over. He was just bulldozing me after I lost the B pawn. But I think the middle game should be fine. I don't fully believe this whole F3, B3 business. Maybe, maybe knight B6 wasn't necessary. In hindsight, I think just knight c3 stopped the c-pawn. I wanted to try to keep my attack down the c-file, but this is a very annoying knight. Offsets his knight a little bit. Oh yeah, so, alright, let me put up a game. Let's watch on Draken's game. And let me get that clip. Crank up my volume, too. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. Don't actually think you guys can see this. Maybe you can. One second. Is this going to work? Yes, there we go. Alright, you guys ready? Some of you already saw this, but I just saw this yesterday. Ah, oh, Bartholomew. Is he strong? He takes a lot of lessons from me over the course of the Arena King, so he may be getting strong one day. <laughs> Indeed. Ah, <laughs> oh, Bartholomew. Yeah, let's let's play that again. Indeed. Ah, oh, Bartholomew. Is he strong? He takes a lot of lessons from me over the course of the Arena King, so he may be getting strong one day. <laughs> and I like how he has his little friend, or probably student, asking him very innocently, like, oh, Finn's on 905, is he strong? And then Meyer just lays into me. <laughs> Gotta take your licks, though, when you're, uh, a streamer. It's hard out here for us streamers, you know? It's a it's a dog eat dog world. There's always a bigger fish who's ready to come and just devour you, as Meyer does in these bullet and blitz arenas against me. Yeah, it does sound like movie dialogue. Again, like the supervillain just plotting in his lair. Talking about the protagonist of the story, a.k.a. Your, yours truly. Uh, Eschner cheered 100 bits for some aloe to put on that burn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe I should take some from, from our buddy here, Mr. Mr. Aloheen. I'll need a lot. I'll need more than Aloheen can provide after that burn. All right, how many games do we have going left in, in round seven? Three more games after this. Henrik Karlstrom cheered 100 bits for the burn relief. Yeah, please refer me to the burn centers, guys. If there's any burn centers, you can, you can, you can Google for me in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. But now I have incentive to flag Meyer even harder. I did manage to flag him last time that we played in the bullet tournament. It was a semi-dirty flag. Rook in three pawns against knight in three pawns. I had the knight, of course, but he was down about 10 seconds.
Okay, what's going on here? Easily winning for black. This should be winning for white, definitely. Knight f5. And then play g6 eventually. <laughs> in the final scene in the movie, John has to play Georg in the final round of the tournament to earn his last GM norm. <laughs> yeah, I'm imagining a searching for Bobby Fischer finale. I offer him a draw out of the kindness of my heart, despite his harsh words he's had for me in the past. He turns it down because he's just such a stone-cold chess killer. And then I have to beat him. I have to go on and beat him and secure first place in the tournament. Hmm, what is going on here? Did White mess this up? I think White messed this up. Oh, never mind, never mind. Although, no, nah, it's, it's just winning. King f7, king h8. No, but actually, oh, that's really weird. Oh, yeah, okay, never mind. I was I was envisioning some stalemate traps, but yes, this is winning. Just got to control f7 with your knight, knight e6. Although, knight d6, king h8. No, there was nothing wrong with that. Knight d6, king h8, check, king g8, h7. Why didn't white play that? Yeah, okay, now white does it. Well, why not knight f7? I'm so confused. <laughs> Is Jazzy just, just playing with black here? Knight f7, check. Does she not realize that she can promote the pawn? I'm getting hypnotized. Now, white's probably going to maneuver this knight via the g5 square. Play it. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, I think she's hallucinating. I think you're right, Wandering Winder. That's the only explanation. This might be a three-position repetition, though, soon. And black knows it. Oh, all right. White found it. All right. Yeah, either hallucinating or just messing with black. That's not how you want to play that endgame, by the way, even though I think it was winning for white the whole time. Don't put your pawns on dark squares against a light square bishop like that. Okay, Bugs Bunny. What's up, Doc? Let's go. Um, This move order. All right. We're going to play a London system here. I need to get more practice in the London system. Okay, now is it 95? Yeah, let's go 95. Post up. Okay, this is almost like this trap that I had against um, Niklas. I think it is. Take, okay, take this. Ah, black knows about it. Black knows about the trap. That's too bad. All right, now I'm on my own. Hmm. Okay, let's do this, and then f4. Try to clamp the e5 square. Yeah, queen takes d7 is better than bishop takes, because then white has this nice little trap, which if you're interested in seeing what trap I'm referring to, go watch my very first dual commentary against Niklas, who should bet. All right, so I think black's completely fine, but black has to figure out long-term how they want to deal with that clamp on e5. I think f6 and e5 would be the natural reaction, but there's some stuff with queen h5 black has to worry about. Yeah, I'm having a hard time right-clicking. trying to right-click on these squares, and nothing is happening. 
It's got to be my mouse. Do this, just stop knight b4. How do I remember that? Well, it's one of the few times that I played the London. <laughs> so that's why I remember it. And it is a nice trap. It's a very good one to know if you play the London system. And it was against a GM. I think very first game of that match. Well, terminal, the idea is you take on c5. Or no, sorry. You take on d6 first, then you take on c5, then you take on h7, then you play queen h5, then you play knight e4 with knight g5 on the way. I think it's the same position. You guys will have to check the tape. Otherwise, it just sounds like I'm babbling. <laughs> okay. Let's do... Hmm. It's ready to play bishop b5. It's annoying. Okay. I'm going to do this. Maybe I can work my knight into c5 at some point. Iron Fizz cheered one bit. This is all my money, John. <laughs> I'll try to put that bit to use, to good use. I have a time edge here against Bugs. My goal in these Title Tuesdays is always to get, to get a positive score. It is such a difficult event. Usually a positive score is decent enough. It's not ideal, but... The past few Title Tuesdays, though, I've been doing better and better. Half point improvement each time. So hopefully I can string together some victories here at the end. That would be really nice. Hmm. So he's okay with the doubling of the pawns. I guess I'm going to take him up on that. Question is now what, though? <clears throat> Just bring the king up. I might expand on the king side, I'm thinking. G4, G5. I've got C2 guarded, so I'm not super worried about that. Yeah, let's just expand a little bit. Maybe king e2 next move. He's playing pretty slow too, so hopefully I can exploit that. So even though he has this file, it's just there's not any place to infiltrate. Terminal, five bits. After the game, can you show us the trap? Yeah, I'll try to reconstruct it. Okay, so he's looking for this. It's coming into C2. Okay, let's do that. He's going to go back. Mm, I don't know about weakening this square, though. Yeah. Probably shouldn't have done that. Ooh, and there's knight takes d4 too. Hmm. That was careless on my part. Okay. I gotta trade the bishops, I guess. Still gets the file though. It's not fun. Hmm. <clears throat> Trying to bust through on the king side or something. I mean, he can bring his rook in. I mean, I guess he's not threatening much with the rook c2. But there's at least that I have going for me. So I've got that going for me. <laughs> As the movie goes. 
Ooh, he takes. That I'm surprised by. Okay. I didn't think he should take that. Give me this weakness to work with. Um, E4 is interesting. G5 also interesting. Let's go E4. He doesn't have much time, so maybe he'll mess up here. <laughs> the time-honored strategy. The opponent doesn't have much time, maybe he'll mess up. Okay, and this was my idea. There's two seconds left. This is getting messy, which is what you want when you have a less a lot less time compared to your opponent. Or a lot more time, I should say. Tricky. Very tricky. Uh, I think my last move was bad, but he didn't exploit it. Yeah, he's going to try to run that. Oh, I won on time. Oh. I think I might have been losing at the end after King F8. King F8, my knight's under attack. Knight c6, and I think he could just ignore it and do this. I was busted. I was definitely busted. What are you guys saying about knight c3 check? Where did he have knight c3? Because if he plays it here, king e3, his rook is under attack, remember? My knight on c8, that was the point of it. Jesse Piano, thank you for the subscription. Was there a knight c3 earlier? Probably. I mean, I think around here I was in trouble. No, there was no earlier knight c3. Yep. You guys just missed that the rook was under attack. No, but I think here, rook e8 would have been strong. Rook e8 looks really nasty. And then he's threatening knight c3 for real this time. Because his rook is not hanging. I guess the knight also isn't hanging. Maybe I can play... No, you know, he's also threatening knight d6 and then take the knight with the knight. Or with the rook. Yeah, I think rook e8 was the money move. That looks crushing. I, I guess I can play this. Struggle on. But, alright, I complicated it in time pressure. I'll take it. Um, so who's winning this tournament? Let's look at Zavin Andreasen... Uh, okay, never mind. There's two players on 7.5 out of 8. I was trying to see who was lead, leading the tournament, but let's just take a look at this game. Okay, so black is struggling to draw here. Queen end game. White has an extra C pawn that's passed. Normally this sort of thing is winning for white. White is low on time, though, and constantly has to think about how to defend the C-pod. Not so easy, because these pawns sort of cancel each other out. White might have to take on A4, I was just going to say. Take on A4, let black take on C5, and try to, try to win with the B-pawn, but I would actually predict a draw now. Although I don't know what this time situation. Tomato Can subscribed. Thank you, Tomato Can. So the challenge here for white, advancing this pawn, keeping it protected, and also, especially, not allowing a perpetual. Because your king tends to get exposed when the queen ventures from, say, this diagonal it's currently on. So white's making some progress here, but it, it gets quite tricky with all the checks that are possible later.
Two more rounds left after this one. How's Andrew doing? The penguin. Don't see penguin. Anybody know? Did Andrew withdraw or what's his status? Okay, now I think black is in definitely decent shape. He won a pawn on the king side. Should be a draw now. White's still pushing, though. Who's going to blink first here? I think draw. And this is the last game in the round. Congrats, congrats, knows, knows all. Said he beat a 2100 in classical on Lee Chess. Congratulations. And a draw. All right. So going into the final two rounds, two players on seven and a half out of eight. They'll probably be playing each other. Shant Sargissian. Okay. Strong I am. Probably looks like a pretty young player. Seen this guy play before. Thinking some bullet. Okay, I didn't get G3 again, so that's good. <laughs> Let's play a Slav. Mm. Okay, let's play this line. Bunch of theory in this variation. Takes with the knight, that's interesting. Yeah, king f2. This guy knows, he knows what he's doing. I've looked at this position before too, though. castle it's a little bit worse for black it's not much but a little bit worse here I can sack uh, for three pawns if I want and that actually looks very interesting especially from a practical standpoint so I might do that let's do it we're just playing for fun and instructional value and pride at this point so yeah and not even down any material. Let's keep this knight. I like that knight. So really solid pawn structure. His king is a little wonky. We can make something happen here. I'm going to try to open the center now. Maybe c5. Yeah, c5. Hmm. Okay. Takes with a bishop. Hmm. All right. We can maybe take here. Did not even realize that. Doesn't work, though, I don't think. I should have been aware of that, though. <clears throat> uh, see 5 I'm going to do this first. I'm, I'm just some, worried about something coming to g5. Mostly his queen. It's a little weakening, though. Hmm. Let's 
tricky. Let's do this. It's hard to contain the activity of his pieces. Ooh, but okay. I don't have that. I got excited for a second. Rook takes g7 would not be good. I don't like this position all of a sudden, guys. For the moment, everything is intact, but it's it's shaky. Did not like seeing his rook get to g3 when I didn't have an ID4. I might have to play rook g8 next. Some sort of consolidation move. But, like, all these points are weak. h6, g7, f7. I probably should have played for e5 earlier. At least I have him thinking a little bit. Hmm. So if I take, he's going to take on F6, I think is the idea. I can play E5 here, though. Maybe I should. Yeah, I think I gotta block that bishop. Ooh. Where do I wanna. Oh, I can't cancel the pre move. There we go. Okay. Because if he takes, I might wanna take with a rook so I have knight e4 at the end. Oh, also, he's just pid. Of course. I almost failed to cancel that pre-move. <laughs> Just mashing my right-click button. Yeah, he might have some issues here with knight e4 coming. I think he missed e5. All right, guys. Let's do this. I need some Team Scandy support. We got him discombobulated. Okay. I'm going in. Mm-hmm. Take him. So if knight takes, I have check. If rook takes, I take on f1, probably. Okay, so he just takes. <clears throat> there, take. Okay, I'm going for the pin. Maybe f5 to come. If rookie one, f5, he takes here though. This must be the right move. Playing it immediately. Um, touche. All right. Got to do it. Oh, he has bishop a3 at the end. Oh, man. That's too bad. Completely missed that move. Bishop a3 at the end of the variation. Brutal. All right. Yeah, this is this is rough now. Maybe some chances still, but... Okay, I, I still do have three pawns. I shouldn't, I shouldn't panic yet. I need to get g4 in. Mm, 
check. Ugh, tough decision here. I'm going to do this one. I don't know. Uh, can take a six. I think this is losing. Yeah, check it, Rook B8. Oh, man. Ouch. I missed Bishop A3, and I still had chances even in the endgame after that. Yeah, that was nice calculation by him. F4 turns out to be a mistake. F4, take, take. This is all forced. Take, and then Bishop here at the end. If not for that move, <clears throat> I'd be doing well in that endgame. But that's what I said about the very first game, too. And actually, I wonder at the end here, I mean, he's got this A-pawn. That A-pawn is the big problem. In hindsight, I think... Well, I don't know. I think I could have saved a move by playing King F5 right away. It didn't occur to me that I should play King F5 and try to go for G4. Because that tempo turned out to be really valuable. I think once this position occurs, it's too late. It was hard to decide on all the pawn moves here, though. G3 check, F3, and also even E3, maybe. Yeah, I think I'm busted after this. Someone was asking about rook takes d1. Yeah, I could have played that. Oh. Well, here I can't play it, right? Because I got to take his queen. I don't know if that's what you mean, but... No, after bishop c1, I thought f5 was almost winning. But yeah, f queen f2, he blocks the diagonal. Maybe I have something better here, but I didn't didn't see it in time pressure. Um, other games going. Let's look at Tigran Petrosian's game. He wins. Durabali. Instructive rook end game right here. Black pushing for the win. <laughs> That's right, prep. He says, John taking lessons left and right. He'll surely be strong one day. Yep. Can black win this? It's tough. His king is cut off, and to win, he's probably going to have to sack a pawn on the king side. Which is not a terrible thing to have to do here, but he's got to take a risk. Like, let white take on g6. That's not a bad pawn to give up, though, because he maintains the pawns on f5 and h5. So that's that's good for him. Five players on 8 out of 9, really? Yeah. It's tight there up at the top. Indeed. Eric is on 7 out of 9, so he's been coming back nicely. Can you make a Meyer emote? Yeah, that would be a good one. Okay, so probably take on g3, take f5, maybe get the king out, start trying to walk over to the king side, king uh, b3. No, I think this is a draw. Rook b5, keep the king contained. Yeah, this should be a draw. King back, c2 or c1. This is a draw without the h-pawn even. This is another end game I've looked at in 100 end games you must know. Mm. Do I mess that up? Okay, don't blunder a2. Rook takes a2 check, though. Still a draw. Check. King over. Yeah, the king has to be cut off by more files than this for this to be winning.
That's good to hear, Ryan the Potser. So now White should just move his rook somewhere up the file. He's going to try to keep the king contained. This, this also works. And then slide in and draw. Okay, final round, guys. Uh, oh, there's one game remaining. <laughs> Incidentally, the same exact end game, just on the other side of the board. These players all know how to draw it. This time it's even harder for black to win because the pawn is one square further up. So white has a pure fortress here on the f-file. As long as you keep the rook guarding on the f-file, there's no way to check and force the king away. So this is even more of a dead draw. All right, last game. I'm on five out of nine. Just try to win. Try to win. Had a couple disappointments in this tournament, but can end on a positive note. Gets Norm Weinstein. Hello, Galder. C5. I'm going to be boring and play C3. And again, we might have a London. I want another crack at this line, if possible. He's going to go to F5 with the knight. That's interesting. Haven't seen that development before, although it makes some sense. getting real creative with his development. Maybe looking for e5 next. All right, I'm just going to castle. Play this up. I don't think knight f6 was so good. I thought he was going to go for e5. So maybe I can send the queen over to h3 and try to cause some problems for him. Wants well, bishop a6. This is master plan here. Um, let's play rook f2. So on bishop a6, I can play the bishop back to c2. I don't want to trade light square bishops yet. I'm going to try to build up an attack on the king side. We're going for it here in the final game. Okay. <clears throat> can play G four. Can also bring this up. I'm going to bring this up. Try to get into G five. Just cause tactical problems, basically. This knight is holding everything together for him. Now I can almost deflect his knight away and win, but it doesn't quite work. How uh, do I take here, maybe? And then knight d7. It's pretty transparent, though, if I do that. Knight g4, he has knight h5, which is annoying. Well, then I could play knight takes h7, maybe? Man. Probably almost wins. Alright, let's start with this. I think this move is good. Let's play queen c7 or something. Ooh, this just wins, right? I think so. It's a nice shot. It forks everything, and main premise, takes, I take h7. If he takes c3, I take, he comes back with a queen, but it's still mate. So yeah, that's pretty much over. He has to give up his queen here. Or a knight or something. If he plays rook c8, I might even take the knight on f6. The position's that good. <clears throat> Is he going to play king here? Ok. 
Okay. Finds a way to continue. All right, let's just play simple. He's threatening my rook in the corner, so I'm just going to defend it. I didn't see a force made after queen takes h7, so going for this instead. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Looks like there should be something just winning here. I don't see it though, so I'm gonna go for the material. I'm just gonna play it simple. I don't wanna lose on time. I'm trying to do something fancy. Surprisingly not uh, simple, though. Attack the bishop. Bishop doesn't have a whole lot of squares. He's trying to figure out where to put it. I'm probably going to take this knight soon. It is attacking my pawn. Let's go here. Okay. <clears throat> Try to stay active. He has bishop f3 here. He kind of stabilize. Let's get behind this pawn. Still looks really tough for him, but it's uh, now more of a technical position. I think I can improve my king a little bit. <clears throat> He's tied down to the f7 weakness, so seems alright to do this. Mm, maybe you should have left that pawn there. I don't know. It's hard to say. <clears throat> okay, let's take. It's going to push now. I don't know. Gonna do something here. Let's do this. Tricky, guys. Still winning, or pl playing for the win, I should say. Let's 
take. That's a nice pawn to get rid of. Gonna play faster here. I think this is finally going to be winning soon, but I've not displayed great technique here. <laughs> eh, I mean, I didn't notice any major blunders, but... He's trying everything to stop me from queening, but it's going to happen soon. Let's just queen. Upper rook. <clears throat> With this pawn dropping off soon, that should be it. He really made me work for it, though. Just tie the king. There's no stalemate tricks or anything. He's got to trade rooks now. Okay. So, thinking back to that. That's sometimes tough psychologically when you, when you land a nice tactic like that. So, getting in knight d7 and you expect to win and you don't immediately win. So, he found probably the only way to really continue. Take on c3 here. And I'm sure this is just dead winning for white. But in an actual game, blitz game that is, with the clock ticking, it's not so easy to parse through all these all these possible moves that white has. I can take on h7. I can move my rook like I did in the game. Uh, might be other moves even. But, I mean, this... Again, it looks like there should be a checkmate or something, maybe. But he has, he has this always. I felt like I had to lose a tempo with the rook at some point. So I move the rook to safety. He takes on f6 with the king. He can't take with the queen because if queen takes h7 mate. So rook d1, king takes. And again, it's the same dilemma. Um, taking here is desirable because it keeps his king out in the open. And I'd like to play e4, e5 after that. But he could move this. His king's going to get back to e7. Not simple. There's stuff that can happen here. I guess e4 is strong, probably. E4 might be good here, because if he takes, there's there's knight takes, but it's getting a little messy. So I went for the material, but I'm only I'm only up one point of material here, because he did win that pawn on C3. But I think my technique was okay. I kept him tied out at F7. I wasn't sure if H4 was the best move. Feels like it should be winning, but just tricky. Tricky stuff. Once I won D5, I felt confident I was going to win. Yeah, yeah, I'm really stuffed up, guys. I gotta go take some day quill or something. What are the standings here? Fighter Man, 91. Got to 9 out of 10. Thanks, Math. Thanks, Maiden47. Vinyl Chessboard cheered one bit. Thanks, Vinyl Chessboard. It's your another bit. Thanks, man, from Utrecht. Appreciate you guys. I don't know who Fighter Ban is. Also an Iranian player, huh? I wonder. Let's see. 
Hmm. I think I've heard of this player before, but I don't know anything about them. Iran, just the next chess superpower. Yeah, it's because I can't really breathe out of my nose right now is why you hear that, Dayan. <laughs> just in the last, like, 15 minutes. <clears throat> but I'll be all right. Doesn't feel like it's going to be too bad. This is a mega draw, this position. In so many ways. Black can just force a queen trade right now. I think Black is trying to figure out if he can win this. Obviously, that's not going to happen, but... Looking for a mating net. Crazier things have happened, I suppose. Uh, UK John, thanks for the 95 bits. This is a great stream. Yeah, thank you so much. Any other games left? One more game, and then we'll look at the final standings. FM Black Border versus Indian Star. So I finished on 6 out of 10. I got a positive score. That might have been the score I got last time, too, or 6.5. Left some chances on the table. Played a couple good games, but uh, left some tactical chances on the table. He got in the opening, I was in pretty good shape in almost all the games. Except for the game against Parhamov. That was the one game where I felt like I just got killed. But every other game, I had my fair share of chances. So Black is actually kind of struggling to win this, even though all he has to do is walk his king over. Knight g3 is on the way. Okay, king e6, rook d3, I suppose there's still some tricks. Black almost flagged there. That's dangerous. Oh, this got drawn. Are you kidding me? This was drawn by the 50 move rule? Really? What? It was going on that long? That is shocking, because that should be easily winning for black. Okay, well, final standings. Fighter men. Iranian Grandmaster won it. Zavan Andreasen got second, and an FM got third on tie breaks, 8.5 out of 10. <clears throat> so yeah, like I said, I finished with six. It's probably still updating the standings. I'm somewhere in here. One of these unwashed masses, part of the unwashed masses down below. How did Eric finish up? Because he had a good score going into the final round. He had 7 out of 9. Okay, he must have lost his final round. All right, guys, I'm going to call this quits. And if I'm feeling up to it, I'm going to try to do the Royal, the Royal Arena Kings tomorrow, the Blitz event. Starts at 2 o'clock p.m. Central, so hope you guys can make it. All right, see you guys. Bye.